Hi, welcome to module six, and we're going to be talking about the precipitation process. Just as a quick introduction to cloud droplets, two key terms that you need to keep in mind is the term drag, which is the opposing resistance and uh, gravity are the two forces that are acting on the falling object, which means that as the gravity is pulling it down, the natural buoyancy that was holding it up has drag as it comes down. It resists the pull of gravity. And that has a lot to do with the way that water droplets will warp and change. And we're going to talk about that shortly. The next key term is terminal velocity. This is the maximum rate at which the droplet will fall based on its mass and the rate of gravity, right? Those two things in combination. Small objects fall slower, larger objects will fall faster, and uh, when cloud droplets increase by about 100 times larger than their original condensation nuclei size, we can see that there's a sufficient terminal velocity that it will overcome the updraft, meaning that anything that was holding it up or allowing it to be buoyant uh, in place will eventually be exceeded once that water droplet increases to a certain mass, once it gets to a certain size, eventually gravity will be the stronger of the two forces, not the buoyancy force that's holding it aloft anymore. It will overcome that and gravity will drag it down. Some key things about the size of the water droplets. This is the condensation nuclei. Uh, remember, condensation nuclei is any material that the water can stick readily to. Uh, it's typically water droplets themselves or little tiny aerosol particulates in the upper atmosphere. Another key term is ice crystal nuclei, and that is just a small nuclei, once again, that ice this time would stick to as opposed to liquid water we're talking about solid water so condensation nuclei and ice crystal nuclei are both incredibly small we can see that as we're talking about it in cubic micrometers in this image and then i literally quadruple my my sizing and I end up with your typical cloud droplet size. This is the one that when I see my fluffy white puffy cloud, I will see this droplet size in my simple set. And then if I go 100 times bigger than that, I will see this lovely cloud droplet size. This is the large one, the one that I would see as a rain droplet. There are two processes on how we create cloud droplets so these little guys and make them large enough to become actual rain droplets or snow crystals and and these two processes are known as cold cloud process and warm cloud process the cold cloud process is also known as the Burgess process, and that has to do with the person who authored the original paper explaining how this process could potentially be done. And the warm cloud process is sometimes also referred to as the collision coalescence process. So I'm going to pause right here and just say to you that there is a set of notes for this, these two cloud processes in your module six. This note list is very cleanly laid out and it has all these terms because one of the main things that you're going to need coming out of this chapter is all of those terms. I'm going to need you to know all of those key terms and words and certain wording and terminology goes with the warm cloud process and other terms go with the cold cloud process. So you might even want to open up that little note set and uh, just underline those key terms um, as we're going through them in this, this lovely PowerPoint. So warm cloud or collision coalescence process works as follows. I have a condensation nuclei and a liquid water droplet begins to stick to it. Typically this water droplet is a super cool water droplet and it will stick to it and it will become a liquid droplet that's even larger. From there, because of its natural size and its parameters, it will continue to coalesce 
with other droplets. And as it's coalescing, which means droplets are coming in from every direction into that droplet. So in this nice picture, they're showing like a downwards mo motion. This is the collision process. Coalescence means that all of the little water vapors floating around all of this singular condensation nuclei here will coalesce. And coalescence is different than accretion, which is another term I'm going to say, because coalescence, you can take the material into the body of the original. So you can kind of like suck it in and create one singular droplet that is all liquid, right? All liquid water. From there, it gets to be a certain size and parameter and gravity starts to pull it down through the cloud itself. So it's still in the cloud. It's just sort of at the top and getting pulled down through the cloud. As it's being pulled down through the cloud, it is still coalescing. So it's still sucking in droplets from every direction. And it is also colliding with the droplets below it, creating even larger parameters in size. And that is where we get into the collision process of this water droplet growth size parameter. Another interesting thing that occurs with water droplets as they fall is they actually become wide and thin in the center. They actually look like a blood cell platelet where they're kind of thick around the edges and very thin in the center, um, like a donut with no hole pop through. So there's like a thin membrane and it becomes wider and wider and wider like a disc. And that's sort of what happens to a water droplet as it falls down, <laughs> down through our atmosphere. So there's a, there's a widening of its growth size. Before I go into cold cloud process, I'm just going to flip over to some other slides that I want to show you on this because I want you to see these terms and really comprehend what we're talking about. So some key points I want to make. Collision coalescence or warm cloud process is common in cloud tops, so the very top of the cloud. So lifting condensation level is the bottom of the cloud, and then we have sort of the topmost regions of the cloud. If the topmost regions of the cloud are warmer than negative 15 degrees Celsius, we consider this a warm cloud. And warm clouds are highly common in the tropical regions, and in our region in the summer months, we can expect warm clouds to exist sort of in the southernmost parts of the United States. So Texas, Florida, uh, lower regions, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, those sorts of regions. But actually up where we are, all clouds, even in the summer, tend to be cold cloud process unless it's a storm that blew in warm clouds. Just looking at those terms again, What's happening with the droplets or the rain droplets themselves is that the cloud droplets fall, the air retards the falling droplets, the greater the speed, the more air molecules it encounters with each second. The cloud droplet will increase its speed until the air resistance is equal to the pull of gravity. And once those two things are equal, that is terminal velocity. I will reach my maximum constant rate of fall. Large droplets will overtake as they are falling smaller droplets. This is the colliding process. And they will merge with those droplets that they are colliding into. And this is the collision, the collision coalescence process. So this is the coalescing of the two. This is a great little uh, image that's just showing the small condensation nuclei and there's an updraft that's pushing that condensation nuclei up through the cloud regime itself. It is coalescing and as it's getting pushed up it's hitting into water droplets as well so it is colliding and gaining um, mass and so it's increasing. Eventually the size of the droplet goes from being a cloud droplet to a rain droplet and it's exceeding gravity or it's exceeding the updraft itself that's holding it so off. So gravity begins to pull it down. As it's getting pulled down through the cloud, it's still coalescing and colliding. So here it is. It's gaining size, gaining size, gaining size until it exits the cloud and then it's gained its maximum mass, right? And it can just be pulled down to earth by gravity the rest of the way without gaining any more mass in size. Um, 
remember that while this art is cute and they're showing one droplet, there is uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of droplets that are doing this at exactly the same time, which is how you get so many in the rainstorm, right? It's not just one singular droplet. So you have to imagine 